Hello friends, as well as those who have a different opinion about the conception of social safety, about its adherence and the activities of what is called the internal predictor of the USSR. This will be about psychodynamics, on the role of psychodynamics in the life of societies and on the possibilities of each person to exert an impact on the further course of events precisely through psychodynamics. Here is a picture. This picture, in December of this year, will be 10 years old. Nevertheless, it is not in demand. Many have read it, forgotten it. Many have not read it and do not know. Nonetheless, all the processes that are behind this picture, which we try to display, they are really relevant for the life of each of us. Well, let's take a look. This is, in principle, the hierarchy of the world. The entire set of processes of governance in which we live. At the very bottom, the population of the state as a set of social groups distinguished by certain sets of characteristic features of each of these groups. Each of us find ourselves inside this little piece, on a par with more than 140 million of the population of Russia. If we go beyond the boundaries of the state formation, then each of the seven billion of mankind is also here. What is higher? Higher is business power, as the power of owners of capital and top managers. Above business power is statehood, as a set of bodies of central, regional and local power. In some cases, business is under it, and in some cases, the state is hired in relation to business. And business does what it wants, and the statehood serves this business. Next comes something that most people don't ponder on at all. This is the human segment of the new sphere of the Earth. It is a set of biologically and socially conditioned egregors. Well, here there is also the natural environment and the abroad. They are outside any framework, since all this that is depicted here is a part of the natural environment, but when considering everything within the state, its borders, there also appears the abroad. Well, above the human segment of the newest sphere of the planet is the newest sphere as a whole. And above is the almightiness of God, which encompasses and penetrates everything. Well, and further we come to the definition of the term psychodynamics, psychodynamics of society and social groups. Psychodynamics is when we do whatever we want and don't do what we don't want. Moreover, it must be understood that the terms want and do not want they are difficult to understand, in the sense that it can be our free desire and non-desire. But if we don't do something out of fear, although we want to, 
or we don't do something out of absence of some possibilities that we are aware of and which also we want. But this imposes certain restrictions on us. This is also expressed in the term we don't want. Why? Because there are fears. We don't want to, why? Because there are no possibilities that we could see. Well, or we see possibilities, but we are not ready to realize these possibilities. We do not have knowledge, skills, and everything else. Well, you can remember the final scenes of the story Stalker. There, the comrade nevertheless got to the ball, to which the fulfillment of desires is ascribed, and he factually prays to it, prays as if to God, on the theme that these bastards did not teach me to feel and think, but I did not sell my soul, therefore you yourself find in me that which is good there, and realize it, so that everyone would be fine. Many people take such a position. But in the stream of psychodynamics of society, this position is a dead end. It dooms to the fact all the uglinesses that exist in life, they are reproduced over time and renewed in new generations. In such situations, it is necessary to engage in self-education. Yes, there are objective laws to which the life of creation is subordinate. These are physical and chemical objective laws that, by their implementation, generate material structures of this world, both substantial and field and they generated the planet, generated its biosphere, they are universal, they are common to the entire cosmos, well, at some minimum, according to the level of cultural development, we mastered them at school and happily forgot. Further, there are also objective laws, which, in the matter of physical and chemical objective laws, condition the life of people. They can be grouped into six groups. The first group, this is the objective laws of a pan-biospheric character. They regulate the emergence of species in the global evolutionary process, they regulate the formation of biocenoses and the interaction of species within the boundaries of these biocenoses. The next group is species-specific objective laws that distinguish the biological species of man from all other biological species. To man, certain species-specific objective laws are also inherent, which, in fact, make us human, and which determine the paths of our further personal and species-specific development. We carry reason, and, accordingly, there are religious noospheric objective laws that regulate the interrelationship of the carriers of reason. They go beyond the boundaries of society, and they also enter society from the hierarchically higher systems, that is, from the noosphere of the planet, from the universal reason, and directly from God, the Creator and Almighty. Further, we carry culture. Culture is all information algorithmics that we do not pass on to subsequent generations on the basis of the genetic mechanism of the biological species. 
Culture is transmitted on some kind of material carriers, and it is transmitted in personal communications of representatives of our biological species with each other. We differ from the overwhelming majority of biological species in that we also have an economy. We do not live on the basis of gathering and hunting. By means of economic activities, we provide ourselves with food and protection from the natural environment, in which we, in natural form, will, in the majority of cases, not survive with the skills that culture gives us. But culture is variative. There are socio-cultural objective laws that can ensure the inner harmony of society and the harmony of the interrelationship between civilization and nature and their violation leads to degradation up to the death of society, not only as a cultural formation, but also as a biomass. All these objective laws, the processes connected with them, they do not harmonize by themselves. Governance towards the processes so as to ensure the harmony of these objective laws is required. Well, and governance is also certain objective laws that are the same, regardless of whether states are engaged in some projects of global significance on the principles of public-private partnership, or if a child rides a tricycle, and behind the dad-mom holds this tricycle by the handle and steers where it's the right way to go. These objective laws are one. Further, our society carries the prejudices inherent in the majority of people. The essence of this prejudice can be expressed in the words, I do not expect to be either a deputy of the State Duma, or a Prime Minister, or a Head of State, or sit in the UN Secretary Council, so why should I know all this? I am a little person. Or a version of the same. I am already old, I have 20 to 30 years to live, or maybe less. Why should I master the knowledge that will never be useful to me in life? But if you look at the personal composition of the deputy corps at any level of power, be it local councils, be it the state Duma, be it senators, be it the government, both ministers and employees of the apparatus, the apparatus of the head of state in any country, these are people who ended up in the bodies of state power, possessing certain skills and knowledge that can be attributed to the field of business communication. That is, they can organize subordinates and they themselves in some way obey the superior leader. They also do not know everything that is necessary to know in order to carry out these functions. What do you need to know? This is a six-volume edition of Fundamentals of Sociology. These books are about the sociology that lies at the basis of politics. It is a little about the economy, but a little bit. This is about the economy. A thick one.
If it is too thick, there are too many letters, then dialectics and atheism, two essences incompatible. It is not thick, a little thicker than my index finger. But for some this is a lot of letters, there are unfamiliar words, unfamiliar concepts, phenomena behind the words, therefore reading this is a lot of work. Perhaps this is even more work than the work of writing all this. And why is it needed? Let's look at this picture again. So, on it, there are two contours. Contour number one and contour number two. Feed forward and feedback lines. Contour number one. This is a prayer dialogue with God through life. Contour number two is the indirect governance through the Neurosphere towards practically everything that is on the planet. If to talk about the psychodynamics of society, then the activity of any individual flows in personal egregorial interaction and each individual does something precisely in the stream of this psychodynamics, which, in relation to him, is an encompassing system. Everyone does what he wants, does not do what he does not want, and it turns out as it turns out. These two contours of governance, indirect governance through psychodynamics, they, in principle, are available to everyone, under certain conditions. A person must abide in the corresponding mood. And moreover, the predestination of any person on earth is to be the steward of God on earth. At least this should be learned. And this means that this whole stack of books is the necessary educational minimum in order to enter these contours of governance through which mightier power is exercised than the power of any dictator, junta, tyrant, or mafia, because all participants in state governance, all participants in business management, all intrasocial mafias that exist, both good mafias and not good mafias, they operate in the stream of psychodynamics. We consider it normal. If we want to learn how to use a car, drive a car, we need to take corresponding courses, pass qualifying exams, and after that, for some time, from a year to several years, work out a driving style and learn how to behave on the road. If someone bought a license, or got behind the wheel, not knowing the traffic rules, not understanding the dynamics of changes in the road situation, the attitude towards him is extremely negative. And if we, being ignorant, enter these contours of governance, then what may be in a grotesque, humorous form was shown by the Americans in the film Bruce Almighty.
в жизни реально для того, чтобы... In real life, in order to enter these contours of governance, you need to know a lot of things. You need to be capable of a lot of things. Regardless of whether you become the Prime Minister or the Head of State, a Deputy of the State Duma, in order to enter these contours of power through psychodynamics, hierarchically higher than any intrasocial power, which is implemented in a structural way through certain structures and official positions in them, you really need to know must know and be able to do much more than deputies, than state officials at various levels and heads of state. If you do not know this, then your capabilities are limited, like the capabilities of Schuhart from Stalker. You are up there, find everything good in me and make sure that we all feel good and no one leaves offended. And this is not provided for by predetermination, because predetermination provides for the personal development of people, creative development, and God will not do for people what people can and must do for themselves. Many exercise the right to idleness within the boundaries of allowance. Well, one of the admirals of our fleet issued a wonderful phrase. In order to do nothing, you must be able to do everything. And it is indeed so. But this is only half. In order to do nothing, you need to be able to do everything and do everything in advance, when necessary, in line with a certain conception of the development of you personally, of our society, of any other culturally peculiar society, of humanity as a whole. If you are able to do everything, and do everything in a timely manner, in advance in relation to the emergence of problems, then you have time for idleness, which you can spend on some non-stressful, not spurred on by circumstances, your own personal development, to help your friends, children, grandchildren develop, outside people, But if you refuse to develop personally, including mastering knowledge and skills, because you don't have the chance to be the head of state, deputy, you have already lived a lot, most of your life, you have already lived and there is little left, then at least have pity on your children and grandchildren. Because such a relation towards life does not generate anything good, but only reproduces the problems inherited from the past in new generations, exacerbates these problems and creates new problems. There is no other way. If we talk about participation in the psychodynamics of society, we always participate in it. The only question is how we participate. We 
we participate in it, in the mode of impossibility to deceive the new sphere and the Omaji. It is impossible to deceive them in any way, and therefore we receive the reward that we deserve. And we receive certain external impacts that stimulate us. If we react to them precisely in the sense of stimulating us to personal development, then we cease to face any problems. If we don't react to these impacts, then the impacts increase up to the level when they destroy us. But one such knowledge that is necessary for entry into the contours of governance 1 and 2 is, after all, knowledge about oneself. The words spiritual culture have been spoken from ancient times. Then science fell into atheism and said that the spirit does not exist. But since the natural phenomena that were previously called by the term spirit did not disappear anywhere, science discovered physical fields. This is that which since ancient times has been called spiritual culture. This is the culture of emission of fields by the person himself. Fields, as a kind of matter, exert an impact on other material objects either directly, if they are field objects, or through cascades of re-emitters. That is, the impact on some field objects causes a secondary impact through them on substantial objects, and, if nature has something with which to respond to this emission, it will respond on the basis of such physical phenomena as resonance, coherence, and some other phenomena. The human biofield can abide in two different states. If you open a physics textbook, you will see there two pictures that can be correlated with these states. Electrostatic charge. Force lines leave an object somewhere in the surrounding world, and they do not return to this object, at least through those levels of the organization of creation known to our modern physics. The second variant is a magnetic field. The magnetic field is characterized by the fact that the North and South Poles do not exist separately. They are always together. The force lines emerge from the North Pole and then return to the South Pole. And the surfaces formed by the force lines, they look like an apple. The apple, it is not quite round. There is a depression into which the stalk enters. On the opposite side, there is a depression where once there was a flower. And the fields that a person emits, they can be likened either to such an apple or to a dandelion, when it's already started seeds and appears as a white sphere. Only these same seeds go into infinity. 
Yes, maybe they are indirect, somehow they bend, but nevertheless, these force lines go into the surrounding world, permeate it, and the border between a person and the rest of the world in this state is absent. But in this state when our fields are like an apple, then there is a certain surface of this apple. The surface, it is conditional, it is determined by the field strength, therefore for someone it is perceived at a distance of several centimeters from the body, while someone senses the presence of this field several hundred meters or more away. Boundaries of perception are a separate question. These two states of the human field structures, they ensure differently his interaction with the surrounding world, the interaction of the field structure with the human organism, the substantial part of the component of this organism. If we abide in the state of an apple, then everything that we think, it in general, does not have any significant impact on the world around us. We are practically completely isolated from it at the level of these active fields. And this state is a state that is given to us so that we can model, envision developments of events. If we think something in this state, then we cannot exert an impact into the external world beyond the boundaries of the limits of this apple. But if we are tormented by emotions in such a state, then with these energies we can destroy our organism, well, as a minimum. We will simply waste certain energy potential, about the same as how one can short-circuit the plus and minus fields of a battery, and then it becomes unusable. And the second state, when our fields go into the outside world, it is characterized by another. If we have emitted something and something can respond in the surrounding world to this, our emission, it will respond. You must be able to distinguish these two states in yourself and you must learn to move from one state to another when you solve these or those tasks. If we are modeling something, engaged in self-digging, making plans for the future and have not approved these plans, then we should abide in the state of the apple. Because if we emit a certain not very good plan in the open state, then it can be realized and become a reality. This is characterized by the words, be afraid of your desires, they can come true. But these words are not accurate, because they are not afraid of desires as such but they are afraid of state transitions when they are fulfilled, when they can be fulfilled, which you do not control, simply because at this time you are engaged in the modeling of something, working out desires, and your mood does not correspond to the mode of functioning of the biofield system of the organism in which it is safe for yourself and those around you. 
These states must be distinguished and each of them should be used for its intended purpose. In order to use it for its intended purpose, you need to know. That is, this pile, or one little booklet, Dialectics and Atheism, they must be mastered. Further, if we talk about the needs and prospects for what it is necessary to master. Now, if you zero the culture, then the biological species Homo sapiens, this is a herd pack monkey. This is a weakly armed biological species. Since it is a weakly armed species, it is impossible for it to survive alone. As with strongly armed biological species, or to survive in single families. Survival and life are possible only in a herd pack state. A herd, a pack, they are functionally holistic formations. There must be a certain hierarchy, which is built on the basis of the algorithmics of herd pack instincts. There is a branch of biology that is called ethology. It studies animal behavior. Ethology revealed that weakly armed species, to the number of which also belongs the herd pack monkey, are characterized by what they call low innate morality. This means that in intraspecific competition, everything that is possible is used. Deception, revenge, delayed revenge, collective persecution of someone, and as a result of this, a hierarchy is built in which roles are distributed. This hierarchy is updated because those who are at the top they are always tested for strength. If they show weakness, then new hierarchies appear. Everything that relates to this, it has since ancient times received the name the animal principle in man. But along with this animal principle, Man, as a personality and as a biological species, carries a certain potential of development, carries a creative potential that realizes this potential of development and must be realized. And this, too, from ancient times, received the name the divine principle. But the whole history, this is a conflict in our psyche between the animal principle and the divine principle. We live in a civilization where, in general, the animal principle has trampled in the psyche of many people the divine principle, which is realized through service, through intellectual power, subordinate to service, through will, which is always meaningful, and must be subordinated to service. Will is a person's ability to subjugate himself and the course of events around to consciously perceived by him purpose consonants. A taken place human, this is a creative potential realized by a consciously volitional order, a meaningfully volitional order, under the power of a dictatorship of service. This is that which should be on earth.
This is precisely the meaning of the words that man is the steward of God on earth, since service is an innate religious sense that provides reliable objective knowledge about what is the bro and what is evil, the concretics of their manifestations, and moreover, it does this proactively in relation to the development of situations. Well, the world is arranged in such a way that there are contours of protection of creation from what is inappropriate. If man as a biological species, as a culturally peculiar society, as an individual, does not realize his predestination, then he is worthless in this creation and he is dangerous for others, for the future of creation, because if we live under the power of the animal principle, and under its power we realize creative potential, then in intraspecific competition of individuals, that which is able to destroy the planet, solar system, galaxy, begins to be used. It is a question only of time and the development of the scientific technological progress. And since this does not correspond to the predestination of man, then there are factors protecting creation from this. In essence, idiotic parasitic aggression of modern mankind. These factors are varied, the algorithmics for their realization are also varied. This is also COVID, which is a leak of biological weapons created by people themselves out of foolishness. This is the possibility of technogenic disasters, which, as the power supply grows, will become more and more destructive. Well, there are planetary catastrophes, such as an asteroid hitting us, Someone dies out, but all this is also happening in the stream of psychodynamics. Therefore, if you are not satisfied with the prospects of the self-liquidation of mankind, the current civilization, then you need to engage in personal development. On the basis of personal development, realizing the divine principle, and restraining the manifestations of the animal principle. It is necessary to change the quality of the psychodynamics of society, so that it would otherwise govern our lives. Everyone would do what he wants, under the power of the dictatorship of Sovist, and would not do what he would not want to do under the power of the dictatorship of service. As a result of this, our whole life would change. That is, in general, all that concerns psychodynamics, because if we talk about the prospects, then the prospects are a consequence of that algorithmics of psychodynamics that we generate ourselves. And if we are not satisfied with the prospects of catastrophes, which are variative but inevitable, while maintaining that quality of psychodynamics, which was formed by the ancestors and which is reproduced by the bulk of the population now. If these prospects do not suit us, we must change ourselves, we must change psychodynamics. Yes, while those who do not want to personally develop, who have stepped onto the path of degradation and cannot turn from it by reason of willlessness, yes, they are doomed. They will die out one way or the other. The only question is the rate of extinction and the number of those who will become extinct. 
But if someone who has embarked on the path of development lives, tries to live under the power of the dictatorship of Soviet, then his future, the future of those whom he helps in personal development, it is guaranteed. And this will allow avoiding that catastrophe, the variative catastrophe, for which the historically formed psychodynamics works, if nothing is done with it. That's all for me. Thanks. Let's move on to the questions. Question. There is an intellectual predictor corrector scheme of governance. If the internal predictor of the USSR is actually a predictor, then where is the corrector now? Well, the part-time corrector is also a predictor. Because, after all, the work is being improved and we, in some way, react to the events and changes that are taking place. As for improvement of works, short course written in the early 90s, it is no longer relevant because there is economics of innovative development. Well, concerning the reaction, you see, if someone is a great leader and teacher, then he can say what to do. Everyone stupidly hangs on his every word, idiotically. Or they recognize the knowledge and recommendations that are reliable and useful in what he announces. They follow this and change their lives. But these are, in general, variations of crowd elitism. Therefore, in 2011, we wrote a note about the egregorial autopilot, which needs to be tuned and regulated, which is where we took the drawing from, with which we started today. We must try to master because this is the most effective way of impacting the course of events and prospects, but with a proviso. With the presence of the corresponding knowledge and the skills to use this knowledge. Correction goes exactly in that direction that we try to refill the deficit of knowledge and transform the knowledge into skills. Thank you for the answer. Next question. The conception of social safety condemns all kinds of practices. In particular, in the answers to questions in September 2019, it was said, if we talk about psychophysiological practices, then the first part of the fundamentals of sociology is devoted to these questions, and then there are no special psychological practices in the conception, nor will there be. At the same time, the fourth part of fundamentals of sociology substantiates the need for a new speciality, a children's trainer in holistic movement and psychophysiological practices. What are some necessary psychophysiological practices that differ from unacceptable ones? How do they differ from holistic movement? How can they be named so as not to confuse them with unacceptable ones in the future? It was about the fact that there are certain traditions that are in one way or the other formalized, algorithmized, 
and they work according to their principle, do an exercise, you passed, do the following, you passed, do the next exercise, you failed, do it again, you passed. The cycle is passed, the result is obtained, thank you, here's a diploma, a certificate and so on and so forth. These practices are rejected in the conception for the simple reason that each person has their own specific problems, which far from always fit into the stream of these practices. In addition, many of these practices represent what is called psychological hacking. That is, unauthorized access to those capabilities that are inherent in the organism, and which, by strength of various reasons, are blocked. What are we talking about when the task is to train special trainers psychologists? This is about the fact that there are objective laws, species-specific as well, and one of the components of these objective laws is the objective laws of development of the human organism and psyche along the path from the prehistory of conception to entering adulthood. And these objective laws must be implemented in such a way that a person entering into adulthood is maximally capable of realizing the potential that was genetically embedded in him, so that he can maximally fully realize what the Almighty suggested to him in destiny. If a person under the impact of parents, under the impact of culture, under the impact of some of his own things, does not follow the path of development as it is due, deviates somewhere, then this somehow manifests itself, including in the fact that he loses his natural species-specific gracefulness and the loss of natural species-specific gracefulness is one of the factors that testifies to the fact that there are some deep psychological problems. Therefore, if a person is returned to this species-specific gracefulness, then these psychological problems are manifested in some way, are realized, and can be corrected. But there is no question of introducing into circulation any psychophysiological practice of the type do one, do two, that's it, you are a human. The point is to know the objective laws, including the objective laws of development. To diagnose the deviation of a particular child in his personal development from the norms of these objective laws, to help him to return to these norms. This is a creative process that does not allow for templatedness, because every child is unique. In general, this was what it was about. But this cannot be realized while sitting on the sofa in the lotus position, it can only be realized in life. And many things that a person is able to do, they are not reproduced at all in the conditions of a training center, training ground and something else. This can work only in the conditions of interacting with real problems. 
And this interaction must flow in the mode of error-free improvisation. This is what it was about. On the one hand, psychophysiological practices of the template type are unacceptable, but on the other hand, endless talks about development, they also lead nowhere, because real practical development is required. Next question. Thank you for the answer. Next question. How are the differences between the two states felt, meaning the apple and the whirlwind? How to learn to distinguish between them in practice? How to distinguish in what state a person is in the current moment? I spoke of the fact that they exist. Well, then you need to carefully look at your beloved self, analyze how the interaction with the outside world takes place, and personally understand in what state you abide, at what time, how it goes, because if you rewind to the past, what the Scientologists call the file clerk, then there is a chronology of events that are stored somewhere in the depths of the soul. Then you will find situations when you threw out some words, and then life flowed in accordance with these words, or there were some careless thoughts, not very good as a rule, and life flowed according to what you thought. If you can reproduce the flow of feelings that was then, look at it from the outside, you will see that mood, that state in which you abided. If you understand at the level of consciousness that there are two of these moods and two states, you can instruct the unconscious level to send a signal to the level of consciousness about what state you are abiding in. These are, in general, questions of individual creativity, creativity of oneself, because what happens in the life of one individual, it can be expressed in a completely different way in the life of another individual for various reasons. Structural peculiarities of the organism, peculiarities of personal biography, some other peculiarities of fate. But the same phenomena can be expressed in the life of different people in different ways. In some cases, the life of one person in different periods of time can also be different. In general, you need to be attentive and meaningfully relate to what is happening. Next question. Thank you for the answer. Next question. In 2000, the text Mira Mira on the Wall was announced as an alternative to auditing. Since then, the proponents of the conception of social safety have not reached the level of the functional capability of the cleared Kirienka. Possible conclusion. The technique is good, but people are suckers for it. We end up with a vicious circle. Psyche glitches will be eliminated by improving nervousness. But the psyche of the majority does not have the resources to start raising nervousness. It is clogged with various glitches, aberrations in the terminology of auditing. Is there a need for a method of restoring psychological health available to significant part of those who accept the conception of social safety in the real state of our nervousness? If so, who could develop it, or which of the existing ones to take? 
You know, the main obstacle. This is not psychic glitches as such. Not aberrations, not something else. The main obstacle is prejudice. And then all sorts of false prejudices of the type, you can't talk about this with your friends, counter, why are you loading this on me, these are your problems. You see, in the New Testament, for many centuries there are the words, the law and the prophets were until John, since that time the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. And now two thousand years have passed, according to the traditional chronology, and a thousand years, according to one of the alternative ones. Well, where are the efforts? Where are the fruits? The majority of people live in the regime of this prejudice. I cannot do anything. God, do everything for me. If a person with any glitches in his psyche, with any delusions, nevertheless begins to engage precisely in this, makes efforts to enter the Kingdom of God, he achieves certain results, because the Almighty does not deviate from his mission to help those who go to him. Therefore, pay less attention to glitches, aberrations and everything else and pay more attention to service, which obliges you to be human and follow the voice of service when service requires personal development. Thank you for the answer. Next question. How to cognize yourself? How I cognize myself, this is not a recipe for the person asking this question. This is one side. And the second side consists in the fact that there are many things with which it is much more difficult to agree when presented to you in a ready-to-use form than it is to guess them yourself. Therefore, knowing oneself is the business of each oneself. Well, again, dialectics and the contents of the first part of Fundamentals of Sociology, that is, consciousness, unconscious levels of the psyche, personal egregorial interaction, mosaic worldview and kaleidoscope, dialectics as an instrument. This is all a toolkit that allows you to cognize both the world around you and to cognize yourself. Next question. Thank you for the answer. Next question. Among the Belkin tales by Pushkin, only Blizzer has a chronological link, and this chronology of 1813. 2013 is long gone. Events on the planet acquire a dramatic character. Does this mean that the matrix created by Pushkin was flushed away by the crowd or turned in the opposite direction by Russia's enemies? No, it is not turned or flushed away. It is simply being implemented somewhat slower than it could. Again, if you go back to the words of Christ, 
the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man presseth into it. Then if efforts had been made, then civilization would long since have been living in the regime of humanness. There would be no social conflicts, there would be intrasocial harmony and harmony between the biosphere and civilization. If we do not make efforts, then God will not do for us what we can and are obliged to do ourselves. Well, among other things, the announcement of a prognosis is a governorial act. And there are prognoses that highlight the possibilities. And when they are announced, then for some reason, people think that everything will come true by itself, and they can do what they did before. If in 2013 everything was supposed to be according to the blizzard, well, okay, well, it will be so, and we will live as we lived. But psychodynamics has not changed. And in order for everything to have been according to blizzard, you would have had to have changed. If you do not change, then there will be something that will be programmed already by your psychodynamics. Next question. Thank you for the answer. Next question. This question arose on the basis of the analytical note of April 2020. The global predictor that studied the cleansing of the planet is not in conflict with Nravi's ethical objective laws. Why is it not in conflict if the state of the world's population is the result of its activities? That is, the role of the global predictor is not significant compared to the role of each individual. How exactly is information about this role? communicated to all living people. Well, first of all, everyone who lives nowadays doesn't really wish to know about this role. Second, there is what is called God's allowance. This is the possibilities given to people from above to make mistakes. And the possibility of making mistakes when exercising the freedom of choice for further development, it entails a certain responsibility for mistakes in the form of closure of feedback lines. And if we look at history, then in general, society has always been given variants of choice within which there were also correct variants. And you see, if Germany had voted for Thalman in 1933, it would have been a different history. But Germany voted for Hitler. Was there an opportunity to vote for Thalman? Yes, there was. This possibility was not removed from the selection menu. Therefore, those who made the wrong choice, they are to blame. They had the opportunity to make a different choice, a better one. In this sense, the global predictor, in general, is not mistaken. It does not violate these religious neuospheric, ethical in their essence, objective laws. You are offered a menu, you make a choice. You are responsible for your choice. Do you have intellect, reason to make the right choice? You do. You didn't use it? No. These are your problems. In general, the art of exploiting God's allowance and introducing into allowance this is a separate theme on which stands global governance in the stream of the biblical project and other crowd elite conceptions that claim to overthrow it.
Those who do not understand these objective laws, violating them, receive feedback lines that destroy them. Well, why is this possible? Because whichever quality of governance, it is better than a war of all against all. And whatever quality of governance there is, it is, after all, also within the boundaries of God's allowance. If you are able to generate alternative governance, then this will disappear. Because psychodynamics, the newosphere as a whole, almightiness, support what is better. If you cannot generate what is better, live as you live. Next question. Thank you for the answer. Next question. You have expressed the opinion several times. It seems like God has credit from the last. From the previous civilization, there were a few passengers of the Ark. What does it mean, credit from the last, at the given stage of the existence of our civilization, when the conclusion has been made about the cleansing of 7 billion banderlogs in 10 to 15 years? But souls are eternal. If the soul is eternal, and God Almighty provides a possibility for everyone, then in personal development, through a series of reincarnations, everyone must achieve a certain quality that would satisfy God. From here we get the so-called Last Judgment, and factually, the summing up of results of one historical stage in the life of this host of souls and the beginning of a new stage. But entering a new stage is when everyone reaches a certain quality, that is, credit from the last, and accordingly, eliminating the villain does not solve the problem. Therefore, the Quran says, the good deed and the evil deed are not alike. Repel the evil deed with one which is better. But none is granted it save those who are steadfast, and none is granted it save the owner of great happiness. Well, most are not steadfast. Most are convinced that they are good, and those around are bad. And the badness of those around, in some cases, allows them to be destroyed. But destruction takes place within the framework of what is called God's allowance. And if we talk about Christian ethics, then it does not presuppose the exploitation of God's allowance in relation to others. To say nothing of the fact that it does not presuppose, does not allow, the introduction of other people into the area of allowance. And one of the reproaches of a Pharisee, which was expressed by Christ, Ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Next question. Thank you for the answer. Next question. Is it possible to exert an impact through the Nuosphere without knowing the content of the processes? What is the role of information of the second priority in influencing the Nuosphere and studying the content? In some cases it is possible, in some not. Because if there is a corresponding algorithmics in psychodynamics, then you, not possessing the necessary knowledge, can activate it if it responds to the vector of objectives that you sent there, uploaded. 
if in society there are carriers of this algorithmics who can implement it. Well, if this is not there, then your message will remain unanswered. Therefore, you need to master knowledge and skills, simply including in order to see the boundaries of your own competence and see the competence of other people with whom you could interact harmoniously. Next question. Thank you for the answer. Next question. The definition of the psychodynamics of society through the expression do what they want or what they agree with does not evoke an unambiguous understanding judging by the numerous dialects of those who call themselves supporters of the conception of social safety. At the same time, in the analytical note 139 from 2019, a description of psychodynamics in more common vocabulary through changes in algorithmics is given. Can you give a different, more understandable definition of psychodynamics than you gave at the beginning of your speech? Definitions can be different, as they can be different descriptions of the same phenomena. Because the question is not in the definition, but the question is whether a person perceives the phenomenon as such or does not perceive it. This is not a controversy in words. It is a question that words indicate certain phenomena. It is easier for some through the algorithmics of egregious, for some it is easier at the level of just this, everyone does what he wants and does not do what he does not want, the result is what we get as a result. Next question. Thank you for the answer. Next question. Can you change your nervousness by will? Or does nervousness direct the regulation of will? How, by will, from the level of consciousness I want, can I change my wish list? How to understand the change in your nervousness? Did it happen or not? Well, how to understand? The first question is that we cannot simultaneously do something and control ourselves. Either we control, rethink, or put our conscious head into a certain action and it is completed. Nevertheless, we can be an observer and evaluator of our behavior in the past, our intentions for the future, and we can do this in the present. And if we understand that nerviousness governs everything and we have done something, then it is either directly the vices of our nerviousness, or some vices of our nerviousness were expressed indirectly through some actions. And if we set ourselves the assertion that it was done badly, and this should not be done, then the next question is, why did we do it? What did we in fact want? That is, is it our malicious intent or is it our mistake? Which, as it is known, there is such an opinion that a mistake is worse than a crime. But a mistake is also programmed by our nervousness. Therefore, if we are engaged in self-digging, then we can get to some kind of nervous standards. 
which are expressed in our wrong behavior, some worldview mistakes. Then we tell ourselves that this is not right, the correct approach to this question is such and such, and in the future we must be guided by this. Nevertheless, if the wrong algorithmic still remains active, then we should say to ourselves, hush, every time our sovist tells us that this is something that should not be. All the same, you should study yourself, your nerviousness, your world view, so that unprovious desires do not arise in you, to say nothing of them being realized. Next question. Thank you for the answer. Next question. If in life there was a huge number of times one felt very, very ashamed, to such an extent, that now shame is perceived as a trifle compared to past shame. Is this suppression of shame and sovest? Yes, this is the suppression of shame and sovest. Thank you for the answer. Next question. How should one respond correctly to lies, ignorance and inappropriate behavior in the concrete life situations and in the information space. When does it make sense to give an answer? There is a principle stated in the Quran. Keep to forgiveness and enjoin kindness and turn away from the ignorant. At the same time, one must understand that help cannot be imposed. That is, if you tell a person while preventing something, this and this is necessary, that and that will happen. He does it. Well, you tell him once, tell him twice, then let him live by his own mind. Well, if he is stubborn, then you tell him, but he does not listen to your arguments, begins to load you with his opinion on the theme that, when I am right, and I am always right, then there is no point in conducting a dialogue at all. But at the same time, you also need to be critical of yourself. Because when they point out to you that you are not doing something correctly or intend to do something wrong, then these may be purely intuitive instructions that cannot be argued. And you yourself must pay attention, try to feel the future, or there must be some argumentation. And if there is some kind of argumentation, then there is a subject for discussion, in which, if you and the interlocutor are capable of a tandem mode, you will come to the right decision, free from mistakes, both his and yours. Next question. Thank you for the answer. Next question. What, in your opinion, should a person experience who, by an effort of will, enter the kingdom of God? Are there such people in our time? Well, I wish you to enter the kingdom of God and then share with us. Next question. Thank you for the answer. Next question. In what images does information come from the noosphere? Visual, auditory visual, tactile, olfactory, some other, or generally special? This is all very different. 
and much is determined by the readiness of the person himself to accept this information. Because some can see, some can hear, that is, information is visualized and becomes audible. It can be in a direct form. It can be in a metaphorical, allegorical form. It can be both in wakefulness and in a state of sleep. It is supposed to be able to see in a dream, being in a certain altered state, in a biofield, in a certain mood to perceive information. But if a person is not ready for this, then there may be vague sensations. What is a vague sensation in relation to this? Well, imagine the situation. You put on a blindfold and try, even within your own home, to live a normal life by ear and touch. This is a vague sensation in relation to all new spheric manifestations. Yes, these vague sensations can somehow be intellectually transformed into your images, into your concepts. Well, again, remember the story of the seven blind sages who examined the elephant from different sides. That is, the interpretation of these vague sensations, the interpretation of some mediated manifestations. But this is a special theme, and different people know how to do it in different ways. To begin with, you still need to pay attention to the fact that the newest fear exists. God speaks the language of life's circumstances, and most things happen with some omens that anticipate. Of course, it is better to see clearly, to hear clearly, but this is the result of personal development. Again, it has been said more than once in the conception, there are two ways. Some psychophysiological practices that exist in the Vedic culture, in the culture of shamanism, this is psychological hacking. And there is what in the Russian tradition is called the gifts of the Holy Spirit. When a person develops personally, and in order for him to better fulfill his chosen mission in the stream of providence, the Almighty opens to him some previously close to his organism capabilities. Goodbye, all the best.